Okay, so this is our very first uh, casual playthrough slash speedrun training for uh, ENS. I'm Andrew, this is Patrick. Patrick's steering right now, he has his uh, MetaMask up. And our plan is roughly we're going to try to set in contract interaction challenges for each other and learn how to speedrun and show off stuff that we're going to do. Yeah. So to, yeah. Today's plan what? is Ethereum name system. So our challenge, roughly as fast as we can, is to buy a new domain name on Ethereum name system and then point the domain name to a URL or something. You're going to point it to something. And... I guess your homepage. I guess your homepage. I'll tell you what I tried doing in, in my practice run was um, IPFS. So you can actually set like an IPFS content hash. Cool. And um, maybe I'll, I'll do that for mine. So how about you just have it point to your, so your goal is to get a new ENS domain name and point it to your homepage. Yeah, the ultimate goal should be that someone can look at my Twitter account and send me ETH. Because it'd be stonegopot.eth. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, one one uh, one ending condition for this is rather than have it be your homepage, have your domain name map to your um, Ethereum address. How about you do both? So like, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. I wonder can I do right. both? Yeah. Okay. So our goal for today should be both. So you got to make a new domain name, um, and I have to browse to it and reach your website, and then cool. I have to send you a payment to your Ethereum name system address. Yep. Yeah. And you need to set up IPFS, and I can try to browse it. Yeah, sure. Okay, so we'll do we'll do that as uh, one of our next challenges. Okay, so um, I'll get you started, and then we can talk about um, we can talk about what we're doing like on the fly. Um, but I think you're going to need some F to get started. So do you want to like hold up your address, and I'll send you that. Yeah. Okay. Where is the chat on this? Yeah, unfortunately, I tried the. You no, no, you don't need chat. You don't need chat. I've got QR code mode. Just click um. I don't know, click some shit. Details? <laughs> yeah, perfect. All right. Awesome. See, I've got my... <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna send you about 30 bucks. Yeah, I tried to buy $30 on CoinDirect, but that was like six hours ago. I think they've confiscated my $30. All right, this should show up any any moment now. Okay. Awesome. All right, there it is. So that's pending. That'll show up in MetaMask, I think, when you have one confirmation. Did you give it a good fee? Uh, no, I gave it shit fee. <laughs> of course. I think I gave it medium mode. Okay, so um, what's uh, what's going to be your game plan once, once you get the, your the coins, price? what are you going to do first? Is it one Giwi? One Giwi. Giwi. Is that what we call the gas price? A I don't know. <laughs> what do you call it? I, I call it a Giwi or a Giwi. <laughs> a Giwi. That's, that is fabulous. <laughs> oh, this is okay, going to be so it. much fun. All right. Okay. So what next? I think you're going to need to go load up the Ethereum name system app. Yep. It's awesome. <clears throat> quite fancy yeah so this is just the ens web page it's got all that info about stuff i tried to look at some if, if, scroll up a bit i just want to point out this like uh well the team nah not the team <laughs> forget but, um, about the team no the app so right so the basic idea is you oh, get wow. to register a, a short name that ends in dot f and then the question is like what can you do with the names um if you have metamask one thing that i found out is that you're just by having MetaMask, your browser will correctly resolve .f um, like top level domain names. So like it should actually browse to your website when you sent the URL, um, and it'll look up like IPFS things too. Um, I couldn't really figure out what the other like apps using ENS were. So like, yeah. Well, you'll see once you um, get there. So have you not used ENS at all? Is this going to be your first time? I've used doing it once. One? Used it once a while ago. Yeah. Um, three, four weeks ago, I registered yeah. with me in for my friend. Okay. All right. Well, where do you register it then? Okay. okay. Cool. There you go. Yeah. App.ens. Yeah. So like this should pop open a request to link with your MetaMask, I think. 
Oh, I guess yeah. it already is. Okay. Wait, is that your existing one? No, this one you can go ahead and register. Yep. Okay. Uh, perfect. Oh, that's neat. So you have to do 0.037F. How much did I just send you? How much F are we talking about? It should be like... I think that's like $6. That's yeah. Because, yeah. I remember asking um, Nick about it. I think if it's four characters or five characters, it's like $600. Then it goes to $60 and $6. Got it. So, so Stone Cold Pat is like a 10 character. So like it's... Yeah. Why don't I try this? Like uh, All right. A, B, or I don't know. Hey, you should get stone cold pat dot f. That's good. Just to show the price though. So that's Oh I see. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. yeah, so the shorter the domain name, the more it costs right now. Yeah. I used DNS back in the day. Um like in with they had their interim resolver. So they've gone through this whole switch where it used to be you would just pay kind of like up front, you would have to do the weird like three day like silent auction yeah, kind of three, thing. It was, it was like three, three days, phases eight, with a three ago. yeah. Yeah, that was ridiculous. That was a big pain. So I just recently migrated my my .f name to the new resolver. Oh, awesome. Okay. So did that already make a transaction? I didn't even see MetaMask prompt or anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess you it didn't share the prompt. Yeah, so it came up in prompt and I sent the oh, transaction. Oh, okay. Show me it in MetaMask. Let's go see the transaction on Etherscan. Oh, that's bummer. Cause like I was seeing your MetaMask, uh, I don't know. I was seeing other MetaMask things. I guess it's a bummer if the little notifications yeah. don't pop up. When you have MetaMask in a tab, can you like get your notifications there? Like, I, I wonder if um, I can try. Yeah, I haven't done another transaction, so I'll find out. Okay. So I've got to wait a minute until it registers the transaction. So this is going to commit and reveal, I guess, uh, the two steps. Yeah, what it seemed to be is that it's still a two phase. Um, it's still two transactions that are involved. The first one is a commitment. So basically, you make a transaction saying, I'm going to pay to reserve the hash of this name. Um, but it's a commitment. So I think that that doesn't, you can't front run it because you can't tell what domain name someone's trying to claim just from the first yeah. transaction. And then the second transaction is just a reveal and that's it. So the only thing that's different is that it used to be that when you would go to register an ENS name, it would start like a two day bidding period and then anyone could compete with you and outbid you to get that name. So like kind of had like front running season. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, I also remember they had this policy where if you started an auction and you didn't reveal your bid, so, you know, I, I bid for the name, but I don't reveal yeah. my bid, then you get penalized for that. So, um, do you know, if you have to put down like six bucks for this, like 12 character domain name, do you have to do, um, do you know if you have to do like, can you get the money back or is that all spent? I think it's, oh, so it used to be a deposit. So um, when they first launched, you would deposit coins and then you get the deposit back when you release yeah. the name. Okay, check it out. So your MetaMask has the plugin there. If you go click it, if you go click it there, um, you, you see in your MetaMask, like don't- I can just do this. I can do resume share. Does that work? No, okay. No, 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 click, click on, click the MetaMask icon. Oops, I don't want to look that. Well, yeah, hey, I see it. Yeah, I see it. Oh. Okay. Okay. Now that so there's the actual five dollars being spent. Okay. Awesome. All right. Oops. Weird, but now it's just back to yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I don't remember if this five dollars will be refunded. I don't think it will be refunded. I don't think it's a deposit any no, any longer. My impression was that the ENS team needs to find a way to be funded. So yeah. that means maybe a way to fund their team. Okay, cool. Registered anyway. So now I can money to my Perfect. Name. And a resolver. The resolver comes from the It looks like this give you a default resolver then. Yeah, so so the controller, I think that's your address. Um the registrant is I guess that's also you. Well. So the resolver is like ENS has one contract that's like the auction and registry system itself and then things like mapping the domain names to 
I don't know, to other things, like to different kinds of fields, that's done by a separate contract called the resolver. So I think what you can do, there's a public resolver that you should be setting your resolver to. I don't know what all of these things are. Well, I'm just looking at some of the names. I see. Um, the one's called Bubbles Heads. So you're going to need to set your resolver to something, I think, before you can do anything else. Yeah. So, so I look like set... it's a you use the yeah. public resolver. Okay, so you use public resolver. Yep, there you go. Awesome. I'd love to copy that um, code. Oh, that's cool. The MetaMask does pop up, and awesome. I definitely see that oh, automated. There we go back. Great. Could we look at the code for the resolver yeah. that you picked? Let's see where it is. So I guess we got to go. Yeah, look for that there. So is Etherscan like fully aware of how to interpret ENS actions? I hope so. Don't know. Oh, look at all that activity. Well, that was one day. Oh, wow. They're stuck transactions. Oh, no. We could, like, I wonder if we could boost the fee for them from, from outside or <laughs> outside. no child plays repair in here. Um, copy, copy that resolver address. You can just copy that address. That's the other one. Oh, oh yeah. is it like a validity address? You, you, well, that's a contract address. You might need to get rid of all the zeros in front and put the zero X. Go away, Zoom. Oh. <laughs> so frustrating. <laughs> okay, zero X. Yeah. And it's an address, so you're going to have to change that URL from TX to address. Okay. Now that should be oh. the resolver. Okay. So. It's, it the runs the ENS interface. There's resolver base. So I, I guess nothing, I don't know whether the resolver is activated in this transaction. I think you're just giving the address of the resolver. Um, I think like maybe there's been like a delicate call where um, you call out to the contract, you run the function on your local storage. Mm -hmm. um, I would assume they're doing that. So there's only one okay. instance. So these things like set content hash um, and name, I think these are all like the behaviors for the different kinds of built-in fields. So like once you have an address, you can do things like set, you basically set all of these like key value mappings. Yep. So like you can set a name, you can set a content hash, which is like an IPFS, like a uh, hash. I guess it's a content, content hash there. Yeah. Name, pub key, text. Yeah, an address. So, okay, you should be able to go back to the app. Yeah. Okay, and, cool. And all right, so now you can do, so hit the little plus there. And you can go set some records. Oh, so, cool. So you can be done pretty quickly here. You can just go to, yeah, it's pretty yeah, quick. You might as well just paste in your own address. Where is it? It's actually much easier than I anticipated. Cool. And then, oh, okay, I have to wait for the transaction. Cut multitask. Yeah, at least, um, yeah, so that would be a good thing for the speed run version of this. So if we wanted to set two fields at once, what we should do is write our own little contract just standing by such yeah. that you can load it up with two, two commands to run simultaneously, to set both the address and the URL. So I think this is a fun concept. Like we can, we can show off how to use the user interfaces for all the different dApps on Ethereum. Yeah, uh, and then, and then we, can, we can try to see how we can do it faster. What does it mean? Got big content. Enter a. Yeah, so it's like you give it an IPFS hash. What if you just want like a? a you can put address. a Bitcoin address. <laughs> I guess you can. Yeah, it has um. You can do text. Um, oh, they're not oh, Bitcoin. I, I see. So there isn't just a URL. I thought that there were like some other options. I thought there was a URL. Yeah, where you just go to. 
Oh, okay. Go to that. You can set um URL there. Oh, awesome. You can Got do it. text okay. URL. So I want to do my homepage. Okay, pop this up. You have to Google one? search to find your homepage. Yeah, well, I got a new one. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> no longer have the university email at our <laughs> website anymore. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I, I love however you... this is working. Like the MetaMask notification just pops up. It's great. Yeah. Although it's not very intuitive how you set your like, homepage. That took a while to find. Still very nerdy. <clears throat> okay, cool. So I think there are the two basic things that need to be done. All right. So how do you visit a web? So try doing, try putting HTTP in front. What I noticed in mine, and I don't know if you're, this is brave and it'll do it. Yeah, perfect. See, MetaMask is like taking it. Um, and I guess by default, it's going and showing you the, I guess it just brings you to that page. Um, hmm. And it's got the URL set. So I guess what I don't know is how to make it go to that URL. Now, what I noticed is that when I put in an IPFS hash, um, like for the content good. field, then it would automatically route you to, uh, you know, to that, that field basically. Okay. Maybe so I, don't, I, don't I don't know if I don't know if there's any way to make it like automatically navigate to that URL. Mm. I I can have a look though while you uh, do your part. Do you want to do the IPFS part now? Yeah, sure. So I'll do. Um, let me think. What's going to do? I think it'll be kind of repetitive if I just go do the same thing. So I, I don't know if the what's going to be the most fun thing we should do. I guess I can show off the... Have you already got a domain name? You mentioned... Yeah, I had already got a domain name. I did a practice run of this. So I got a domain name. I did a subdomain as well. I'll oh, go ahead and do screen share and just show you off. Um, I'll show yeah. off everything that I have. So let's see how this goes. Yeah, I'll turn um, mine off. All right. Do you see mine? I have no idea what yep. it looks like on Zoom right now or what's being recorded. Okay, so you see my MetaMask. Plenty here. of bots. You've been uh, getting tipped. Yeah, um, well, I, I did some playing around with Compound and DYDX, and I have no idea what even my net position is. Like, I borrowed this bat against some Ether that I deposited, and like, I have a token representing the Ether that I deposited. What is a CUSDC? So I, I don't have any idea. It's Compound. It's like a, a Coinbase Compound. I mean, I don't think so. This this is USD Coinbase. I don't yeah. have any idea what I've done. Like I put some money in, I, I took out positions, they gave me a bunch of bat, but like I owe the bat back. I can't really figure out what exactly it is. So I'm like over under hyper collateralized and it's probably gonna take several episodes of this shit podcast to figure out like what exactly I've like financially encumbered to myself. Um, but that's for another one. I'll stick to the ENS thing here. So I had um, sock1024.f. Kind of a shorter name, but not um, not a uh, not that big of a deal. You don't have to pay extra because it's still like seven characters. Um, and then, what does it show here? Does it show the subdomains? Yeah, if I click subdomains here, so I also did like speedrun.sakuno 24 f Oh, cool. That's controlled with this. And so here I have an IPFS link, and this just goes to when you click that link, it takes you to like the public gateway. So I mean, oh, cool. it's kind of bullshit. Like what's, you know, we're, we're doing this clearly just with like our browsers and doing Chrome browser here. So like my MetaMask is clearly just going through Infura and this link isn't using IPFS directly. It's just going through this gateway. So yeah, none of my clients are like really checking that this hash is done right. But if you put the subdomain into uh, MetaMask, maybe I could try that. Should I try to put your subdomain? Yeah, so, so here's what, Here's what happens is when I yep. do HTTP sock, no, speedrun sock one two four dot f, um, MetaMask goes and immediately goes to that content Weird. hash and loads it. Why did mine not work then? I think because mine was done by mine was done by this content hash and this text record 
like we can see like one thing so here i'll play around like what i will do is remove the content hash and is that going to pop up with my metamask what's going on here <laughs> you just cancel. i want to trash it i think you have to replace it I you can't it. oh you have, the, the, you have the trash don't you the, the little trash con well now what do i do shit there's a little trash can there. Um, can yeah, I know, but I clicked the trash can and it didn't oh. do anything. So I'm not thrilled with that. <laughs> Let me add another text field though. I, I, so I basically, I think that MetaMask like knows how to go use the, uh, like it knows how to go browse the content hash, but it just doesn't know about this text record. So I'll do my software24.com. HTTPS definitely. So that pops up MetaMask. Do you see the MetaMask notification here? I don't see it, no. No, okay. How about, how about now? Hold on. Do you see it there? Yeah. Ah, okay, perfect, okay. All right, so there's set text, but I wanna get rid of this content address and I don't have any idea how the stupid trash can doesn't work. <laughs> So this you know, is like busted. Empty by like zero X and would that work? Okay, hold on. So now, now we can maybe have a bit of fun. So maybe now I can do, if I can't get to it through this interface, maybe I can get to it from- Oh, the, you just got I, I may be able to do it through the public resolver. Uh, it's not the right public resolver. Yeah, it's public resolver. You want to like paste the address for me? I don't know where I'm getting stuck here. Um, Some bullshit. Let me have a look. It was like two two something. Oh, here it goes. So it's all right. Did you get it? Okay. Yeah. I like your cat. Thank you. It's random XKCD choice. Okay. Okay, so it was content hash. I want to go to this content hash resolver and you can do set, but, but can you not do, can you not just do nothing? I guess what I want to do is set it back to zero, but what's happening is yeah. that this, this interface isn't letting me set nothing. So one thing I could do is like edit the code like in little dev console here, or I can just try to do set content hash so let me see if I can get to like write contract and see if I can work out what the parameters here should be. Uh, should this be, is it set content or set content hash? I guess that's yeah. the only one that I have. Let's try it then, okay. Uh, cool. Yeah, so I guess I don't have that many options here. What's the node? I know what I'll do. Um, I will I go, resolver. I'm gonna go look up set text. I'm gonna go look up the transaction that I used for set text. And I'm just gonna copy whatever the node was there. Um, okay, index topic one, bytes 32 node. Is that the node? What am I missing here? Uh, just, I guess you could just compare it to the addresses you already have. It should be your resolver. Well, the resolver is what I'm going to be like sending this uh, transaction to. Okay, okay, that is the address of the public resolver. Then it should just be the input your... data. That, that's definitely the, the node right there, that first option. Yeah. So let me go back to this. So that'll be my node. And then I'm just going to set that to 0x0. Zero, zero. Why isn't this connected to my Web3? Connect to Web3. Got to enable the MetaMask on this. Look how it's slow. Okay. 
All right, did that work? Is it connected now? Set content hash. Motherfucker, I am connected. <laughs> I love that we've used ENS for the sake of 20 minutes. <laughs> we've to go into Etherscan to the contract code. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is exactly the sort of fun I wanted to have doing like <laughs> weird ass contract workarounds. I mean, that is exactly what I wanted to be doing. Uh, I wanted to get it to open the pop up here. Here where you can see it. There it goes. Okay. So I can look at the data, but it's no hope we're going to be able to interpret it. Awesome. All right, so is this gonna have any, is this gonna have any effect, who knows? Trying out in the next episode. Will, will it show anything pending here? I like that we're like, I mean, this is like getting out of bounds like in the first level, right? Like we're already doing something that it doesn't know how to handle. I bet that this transaction is screwed up somehow and it's not gonna do what yeah. I want it to. Okay, I thought that was a confirming. Nah, no chance. Not not with these like one gig away gas price. <laughs> or or Kiwi as I've learned it should be pronounced. Yeah. Although one fact I got recently, um, over the past few months, while well, Bitcoin's market cap is ten X of Ethereum, yeah. its the market's only four X. Well cool. Okay. So it says success, but what were the um were there any state changes? It says content has changed. Oh, cool. I didn't know how to state change. Uh... Oh, that's pretty cool. So you can see. Um, yeah. Before. That's awesome. What the hell does any of this mean, though? Well, that's the contract address. And then it's just saying the value that's been updated. But. I don't know the overview of your account address. So it changed this storage address, but it changed it from zero, from non-zero something to something else. I meant to, but I was trying to change it to nothing. <laughs> yeah. Check the, What's the, going on here? Try refresh and Jed, did it work? Yeah, okay, it worked, perfect. So I obliterated okay. the content address. I don't understand how I did it. I didn't go to zero? Uh, but I guess it worked. Well, yeah, it doesn't, um, but going to zero is treated as unset for the sake of pretty much everything. Like I think what this site's yeah. doing is enumerating all of the known fields and ones that are zero are, that's what Yeah, I meant, I meant an ether scan. An ether scan, I went from like before it was zero, then afterwards went to a value. Yeah, I don't really understand what's gone on with, um, I don't understand what's going on with this really. Was this not the right transaction? What was the right transaction? Yeah, 37 seconds ago. Yeah. No, this was this was set text. So that can't be the right transaction. That would have had to be I somehow clicked the wrong transaction. I was looking at the transaction I used to set my URL to the sock1024.com. This should be the one that set content hash. Cool. And then yeah, that's what I wanted. So it was something now set to zero. This was like a long string because it had that whole IPFS URL and it's all set to zero. So I nulled out like the whole string. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. So, so far so good. Um, well, that was fun. What else can I do? Oh, I wanted to double check whether or not my MetaMask knows how to read this text URL. So I will now go again to uh, HTTP sock speedrun.sock1024.f and no, okay, no, no. it can't resolve it to a particular thing, so it just brings me to that site, so that's great. That's pretty frustrating though that it prioritizes IPFS over just normal domains. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe it's just because there's no like built-in handler for them, like content hash is sort of like first level and URL, email, those are all like options here. I wonder yeah. if you can even add custom things. Like I can add text, key. I guess this doesn't let me like create other keys, but my guess is that if you look at the contract code again for the resolver, my guess is that this contract code doesn't actually have any special handlers for email or URL. I think it'll just have like set text. Yeah. 
and you get to say what the key is, but it's not any, it's just treated as like an opaque string. There's nothing else going on there. That's a bit frustrating though. Yeah, it's just primitive at this point. Um, I thought it was fun that you could like hook. I mean, I, I'm, I'm impressed that it does as well as it does, frankly. So it's all just a matter of where your expectations are, I guess. <laughs> are there any, um, I was really hoping that we could do one of those, like, um, let me go back to ENS applications. So you go back to the Ethereum site that has all of these, uh, got all of these apps, mobile wallets and apps, like all these cool apps have got to do something like really awesome if you have like an F address, right? So like, what about uh, what about ETH simple? ETH simple. This is a turtle, isn't it? I, I don't I want know. ETH tricky. Oh, uh, okay. Well, let me while I've got this up. Let me do one cool thing. First of all, yeah, I'll connect to it. Um, so let's do this. I'm gonna send some ETH to Stone Cold Pat. Oh, cool. I need to send you. .f. Yeah, cool. And there you go. Oh, it worked all awesome. You're gonna get that's, 15 that's cents. Good. Slowly. <laughs> there we go. So that is a transaction sent to an Ethereum short name. How cool is that? And did I get it? I think we're definitely having some fun here. Oh, I got it. Yeah, awesome. Okay, what about this thing? What if I just find like a random person on Twitter? That's actually quite nice. You can just you can literally tip people based on their name. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna, gonna do my done sharing for now. Oh, cool. I can share. Although I'm not logged in. Um, Cool. I'll look up. There's your Twitter. Okay. Does Nick Carter have a have an ENS name? We should like throw something back to Nick Carter, who offered us yeah. his like corporate premiere Zoom, so we could do this recording. Yeah, I don't know if he has it. He has a new avatar. That's for sure. Yeah, he, he got the white block one. That's a good start. Yeah, I Are like there it. Any, uh, there's no QR codes in it. <laughs> no, there should be. I don't know if he has an uh, ETH though. One sec, I'll send some to Nick though. And you know, he sort of, I guess he invented Nick .f. Yeah, he must have invented this. He got in one of those like top tier four letter. <laughs> Did he, he have to pay 30 back. bucks for his like four character domain name? It's over an ETH for the, the four character. That's insane. All right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. There oh, yeah. Are. Okay, so I'm gonna be a bit stingy. Yeah, so. give him like smallest, give him epsilon. Yeah, and now we're talking. Give him a G-way. Give him a G-wee, G-wee. A G-wee, how many zeros is that then? Just the whole zero. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll send him that. Should I do uh, that? <laughs> yeah, spend, <laughs> spend, uh, spend two cents on gas to give him like a, Ten thousandth of a cent of ether to his uh, ENS address. That's pretty okay, well, that's fantastic. You want you want to wrap this up so that we set a nice tradition of keeping these short and punchy and to the point. Yeah, uh, I guess I guess the wrap is that I managed to register a domain name, StoneGoPod.eth. Uh, we have an address set up, so Andrew was able to send me money. That was very short. Yeah. He was typed in StoneGoPod.eth, and my address came up. The little frustrating thing for this is that it, if I type, you know, stonegopot.eth into the browser, yeah. it doesn't actually bring me to the domain. That's probably the thing I'm most disappointed by. Yeah, it's, it's amazing to me that it works at all, that it bounces over to MetaMask and MetaMask tries to like do what it can with it. But if it, even though you clearly have a URL, you would expect it to go to that URL and instead it just takes you to the, you know, ENS app kind of metadata page or like about it. Like you wanted it just to go straight to that URL rather than taking it here, but I'm surprised it does anything at all with .f names. Yeah, I'm more surprised that IPFS works. So Andre connected it to his, uh, an IPFS, and it actually went to that URL. And yeah. you could, so, what, what, what was your web page about? What do you mean, what, what was the my IPFS. web page about? Oh, it was one of the, I just looked at like IPFS for like available 
websites and like someone has an XKCD data set and you just like take that. So I got, I got it from like just some stock list of like example IPFS names because I couldn't figure out how to IPF. You know, in a future episode, we'll do like proper like run your own IPFS or something like that and actually host yeah. content. So um, yeah, if you, um, if for it. whatever reason you're able to watch this, I don't know if it means we actually got off our asses and edited it and put <laughs> it up on YouTube or something. But if you like this kind of content, I think that we'll try to do this more frequently where we come up with Ethereum usability challenges and see if we can like hack our way through accomplishing things. So if you have ideas for challenges you would like us to see or suggestions on like what else we should do for this kind of video, then um, let us know somehow. Just go to our like, go to stonecoldpat.f and send it an email and send it um, a data payload hex encoded in an Ethereum transaction and we'll get back to you with the uh, info. Cool. Or yours was SOC1024. If they got this far, they can go find our Twitter. So <laughs> not going to worry about it, I guess. Like and subscribe okay. and all that. Awesome. Okay, cheers, okay. guys. All right. That was fun. I will end it and hopefully recording worked. All right.